Yeah, I see this sign. Okay, so. Just waiting for the YouTube to start. And looks like it's just beginning now. Perfect. Welcome okay. uh, to the second half of um, Right from the Gut featuring Natalie Skorikova and um, the method writers um, from her class in Ukraine. Welcome back, Natalie. Thank you. Okay. Um, Maria, you can start. Okay. Uh, my name is Maria Felenko. I'm film director from Ukraine. Also, I'm student. I'm getting master degree film directing uh, in Kyiv University. And now I will read text. The text I um, uh, wrote before 24 of February. Yes. Uh, my precious. <laughs> She sees him again today. Yet another he came into Kata's life recently. She trusts him, finally. She won't have to worry about consequences she can trust. For the first time in her life, he didn't say of the previous ones that Jacks and he was such a prince and would make her life a fairy tale. At their first meeting after he told her what he thought about those exes. For the first time, she didn't get scared and burst into tears, even after she set conditions. He told Kata that everything could be fixed and life could go on. Is it really possible that now she can just come down, fix everything and move on? Kata was never afraid of them, even as a child them, dentists. She remember in second grade during a general medical exam, she bragged that her mouth is all cool because her parents constantly control hygiene as well as visit to a doctor twice a year. But then something went wrong. It is a shame to cry in public. You can't cry in public. Clench your teeth, clench your teeth and don't cry. What idiot has come up with that phrase? Clench your teeth and don't cry. Everyone told Katya when it was hard at school, when her peers mocked, when she got bad grades, when she had a fight with her music teacher and he public, publicly ridiculed her so that uh, the whole school knew. It is a shame to cry. You must clench your teeth. Clench your teeth and don't cry. Gray walls, shadows on them. Yellow leaf, leaves rustle under your feet. White keys, black keys, black and white. You can play piano to get your mind off things. Just don't cry. You stay home alone and read books of love, but come be something else. But it has to be interesting. You like purple, also green, yellow, pink, you like it a lot, and you like to sing a lot, but you can't. Now you can't sing as well. And most importantly, you can't cry. It is a shame to cry. It is a shame to cry in public. You have to study hard to as not to think. She heard yesterday, they saw. It was scary, really scary. Don't tell your parents it is is it a shame? Most importantly, don't cry. Never cry. Clench your teeth and don't cry. She sees him again today, the dentist. Yet another he. You have to avoid stress. How long has this been going on? Eight years, Wesley. Uh, were there any tragic events? events? Nope. Well, everything can be fixed here, but you have to avoid stress from now on. August, hot outside, feels nice here, cooler. Katya visits the dentist for the third time that week. Dentist's staff passes her a bill for her future treatment. 
90,000 hryvnias. That is, if nothing additional will be required. Sound, sounds not so good, but Katya quietly goes over the plan. No surprises. She was surprised by those dances so many times, especially after words like, well, we could treat you here, but not the whole thing because we underqualified to work with such issues. Some teeth can do with common treatment and you have such a structure, you'll have to look for more expensive place. And someone, someone said the dentistry like a philosophy and you must find the one that suits you. Today, the philosophy of 90,000 hryvnias along with skipping all her teeth but without stress in life seems to be a philosophy that suits Katya and she is ready to follow it. So, when shall I come next time? Katya, Katya asks after she, she's done reading the plan. Daytime, Katya waits to be called to the doctor's office, swiping Instagram. There is the meme. Don't you want to start dating a dentist? I'm sick of giving them all my money. No, mom, I don't. I love. She turns off the phone, puts it away. Can't believe I found that meme just before I go in. I have a very precious mouth. I know, and it will get more precious, but it matters to me. A polite lady at reception offered me coffee with chocolate. She's funny. I mean chocolate at the dentist. If only I was asked which advice could I give to all the people on the planet, I would advise everyone to cry whenever they want. Cut a thought. Thank you, Maria. It's, uh, I think it's uh, one of the best advice. advice. <laughs> we have to cry when, when we need to cry. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, okay, Natalie. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, it's a big pleasure to be here and to hear all this touching uh, texts. Uh, I am uh, Natalia Kovtaniuk and um, uh, I am a lecturer and a teacher of Ukrainian language and literature. Um, I got my PhD in the field of Ukrainian literature and post-colonial studies and um, now um, I'm Ukrainian refugee. I had uh, my temporary shelter um, in Austria uh, and um, uh, as a scholar, um, I, I, I uh, tend to work uh, with the texts uh, uh, that uh, are engaged in uh, ideology uh, and politics uh, uh, because uh, I use approach of post-colonial studies. But as a reader, uh, I really uh, like uh, uh, text, uh, this aesthetic uh, side um, of texts. Uh, I mean, figurative language experiments and so on and so on and so on. Uh, so uh, now I want uh, um, just uh, to present uh, one text that is not engaged in any, any ideology, maybe just in ideology of life. Um, the name of this text is Bertie. I'm 30. I run, I flew, I reached, I avoided, I aged. I know life does not need to be lived running. Sometimes it can be sitting with a bare butt on the ground, as in my childhood, near my granny, in my overnight where I could call up and hide from the whole world. For years, I've been bringing my inner little girl there. She wants to lie down on a pillow with her granny and wait for granny's eternal hearted hands to stroke her hair. This stroking of my hair I now expect from men, just a stroke of my hair and kiss on the forehead. My men do not have such hearted hands like my granny does, with cracks which have clogged dust, soil, earth, and the planet. The whole planet is lodged in my grandmother's hands. 
Our little planet where there was no money, no good roads, no water in the house. The water was in a well, in a well that was harshly set into our land as a throat. And the graces were growing from the ground. Animals were growing from graces. We were growing from animals, the whole family. And the ground was lodged into the cracks in hands of my granny. I ran, I flew, I reached, I avoided, I aged. I aged enough to go to my grandmother and ask her to take me back, to graze cows and to rake hay. Grandma will say, already, my little bird has arrived and she will cry. I'm here on my land, in my ark. In it, there are only graces and cows. I don't take men there, I take myself. I'm your only son, mother. I'm your only daughter, father. I'm the only flower that grew on this land, near the well, among these graces. I ran, I flew, I reached, I avoided. I aged. And now I'm just asking back. I ask so little. Please allow me to graze cows. I promise I will rake all this hay, all these graces. I will feed all these animals. I will give to drink this well. Wells can be thirsty as people in their thirties. Daddy, look, I brought my tired horse. Find him the best blacksmith. Find him the best prince. Because I've already found myself and what to do with this finding, daddy. Now I'm just taking it to the cracks in my grandmother's hands. Grandma will be happy. Grandma will say, birdie, my little bird has arrived. And she will cry because I'm not a beast from these graces. I'm very floating in the air, flying. And now I just want to sit, settle down, somewhere on the high field, on the pasture, between two trees rooted in this land, in these graves, in this family, my family. My granny told me, you need to marry a villager. You will not perish with him either in the city or in the village. But I'm lost in the cities. I'm lost in the villages because I'm birdie. I fly. I seldom sit on the ground. Life, life can be run through, floated through, lived through. Sometimes it can be sitting with a bare butt on the ground, as in my childhood, near my cranny. The main thing is that the water will be in the well. The well that is harshly set into our land as a throat. And graces will grow from the ground. Animals will grow from graces. We will grow from animals. The whole family. Thank you, Natalie. Read comments. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay, Irina. I see that you, we have uh, two Irinas. <laughs> Irina, are you ready? We don't. Мы вас не чуем. Мы вымкнем микрофон. Ah. I have some I have some technical problems. Can we just um, I would like to miss my turn and be next one. Uh, yeah, can we do that, please? Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Thank you. While the next uh, person is getting ready, I just wanted to say of the previous poem, I that I loved that poem and I cried when I was um, editing it. It's very beautiful and the concept of the granny 
the grandmother, I, I don't, how do you say grandmother in Ukrainian? Babusa. Beautiful. We have it in Greek, the yaya, yaya the yaya, and Greek Americans mispronounce it, they say yaya, but that's a, a cultural figure and very important in many cultures because that's who raises the children, you know, the babysitter and who they uh, remember. And I, and I see many of you wrote about your grandmothers and I, I felt for that. Yeah, it's very interesting because uh, second two pieces also will include this, this metaphor and this, uh, this image. Okay, Lydia. Uh, yes, hi. We, so we, hello. <laughs> technical problems made me speak. <laughs> um, my name is Lydia. I'm a filmmaker as an author and a director and producer, so all in one. I'm originally from Kiev. Uh, when the war started, I worked as a domestic producer called Fixer, and uh, later I started to work for a uh, Ukrainian army. I have already done it at the start of the war, so I thought this is a most logical decision for me in the current situation. And uh, also, I, I'm very happy that Natalie made this course because it's really a gift of God. It's, I, I don't know how, how, how to thank for that because it's really keeping me uh, alive and good in, in good mood at least like one time, yeah, two times a week when I write the text and when I join the class. So I'm sure that two times a week I, I will be happy. So I'm, I'm very, very grateful. Thank and uh, I grateful for uh, this uh, possibility uh, because I'm, I think it's, it's so cool that people from America are hearing our voices and uh, our beautiful text from all these people. And um, I'm, I'm very, very grateful for all that situation that it's uh, for all people who made it possible. So, and I'm scared to read my text, but I will survive. You got this. Yes, uh, so I have to turn in a text uh, that lasts three minutes. Ironically, that's the same uh, 500 words we required uh, to write during the course. And I always write more because I love to write. Writing uh, seems to be the only thing that makes me feel alive. Even so, in the process, I lie still on my back, press it down with a laptop often crying. The magic sound created by my fingernails on the keyboard lulls me and, and suddenly I decide to look for something I've written, written before. Maybe some masterpiece is already there and uh, nothing has to be done now. It's too scary to imagine reading those words uh, I'm writing now in front of strangers. So I'm lying in the only hotel with the vacant rooms uh, close to Kramatorsk. Its cafeteria windows are blocked by tables and nailed up with OSB wood. They, be, uh, they have been taken out by a rocket landing. A building 50 meters away suffered a hit. It's crushed and burned out. Journalists I work with have been doing an evacuation report in Lysychansk this morning. Lysychansk. The evacuation bus, bus arrived. People rushed to it from a shelter as if they were sprinters. Their faces tell nothing. Their faces lost their communication function as their organism switched to an energy saving mode. They're just bodies with skin uh, with a desire to get on the bus. They were brought from Lubizhna, which uh, Russians have been trying to turn into a pile of bricks for over a month now. I know that because uh, back in the March, I wrote an interview with people evacuated from there. Rubishne is a small town and I wonder how it still exists. Uh, an old woman in a blue knitted jersey over a flowered bathrobe and plaid slippers agreed to, to talk with, to us. She refused to evacuate uh, since there were two dogs, cats and two cows. Yesterday, a bomb hit her house. The house burn, burned down completely, and together with dogs and cats, old woman and cows survived. 
She left the house to her neighbor and went for evacuation. Her entire property are clothes she has and plate slippers. It strikes me that this woman's neighbor stayed in Rubizna, along with two cows. Probably, probably she has cats too, and pigs maybe, and the kitchen garden. Remains of broken cars are scattered around of both sides of the road. Some are burned down, burned down others have signs of accidents. Most of the wheels and, and he headlights are missing. I try to understand the circumstances under which the, these cars um, were left here. What happened to the people? This year there were no street battles here, so that must be consequences of road accidents uh, while evacuating, shelling maybe. How unlucky a, a person must be to get hit by a missile while driving down a road in the rear. A woman in her 30s with two kids, three in one year, year old. She refused to talk uh, to reporters, and once they boarded the bus, all three of them immediately fell asleep. There was uh, a man with bandaged head, traces of blood in his sweats, sweet, 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 sorry. When the, bus, when the bus took off, he began to cry. A couple with a young dog, a husky, hold each other's hands. A white Jiguli made before I was born follows the bus. Inside the car are an old woman, a shepherd and some junk. White debris bags hang out of uh, back windows, fluttering in motion like wings of Mercury's helmet. They are going to Poltava. The relatives are waiting for, for them there. I left the journalist and got in my car. No, I will follow the bus while my colleagues write a report, a report inside. I steer one hand. Uh, I steer with one hand between concrete blocks, trying to take pictures of wild spring landscapes with the other. Not really succeeding, but I can stop taking pictures because I need to feel, even if that feeling is fear of my own voice or agitation in front of an audience. I'm tired of feeling nothing. A bit more and I'm burst. Thank you, Lydia. So <laughs> reading is more difficult than speaking for me, so. <laughs> I think it's for a lot of people. Okay, thank you. We are with you on the same page. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, okay, Irina. Ira, are you ready? We are not hearing you now. Okay, so uh, I will try, but still uh, we have some, some troubles with uh, with I don't know with what, but still, okay. So I would like, first of all, to introduce myself. My name is Irina Bilan. I am a journalist. Uh, I'm a mother. I have absolutely amazing 15 years old son and absolutely furious small dog. And uh, I am Ukrainian. Uh, several months ago, I was so naive that I thought that I'm a cosmopolitan. But now I think that I'm Ukrainian. I not even think about that, I'm sure in that. And um, although all these um, three months, I prohibited myself to speak about love. Now I would like to sell that I'm a little bit in love. A big little bit, okay. So, I remember the geishas, sort of remember. What I know about them uh, flashes before me like multicolored pieces of glass inside a tube. We used to have one when we were kids, a kaleidoscope. Spin it, glass roll over, fold into a new picture. That is how all the fragments of the picture called geisha roll before my eyes. Heavy makeup heavy sandals, their hands hidden in the heavy sleeves of the robe. 
the geisha is walking small steps on bent legs in Japanese watercolors. Watercolors and chewing gums were brought by her son's sailors. Actually, they were postcards. On one side, there is an insert of thin canvas cambric with some unthinkably delicate watercolor, quite unpretentious. Three stroke of the brush and I see a conditional Fujiyama. Cherry blossoms are sure to bloom silent pink. It is called ashes of the rose. Somebody burned a rose and noticed that petals burning turned a noble gray hue. There is no nobility in pink. There are ambitions and challenges, but no nobility. The ashes of a rose. Why would this someone start burning a rosebud? I now feel like a rose burned for the sake of curiosity. I feel like, I feel, I am. Who am I? Who am I? I am in a foreign country at a foreign table with traces of glue and paints left by other people's children. I have a bouquet of my favorite tulips in front of me. As teenagers in Kherson, we practiced kissing on tulips. I would wear up, I would uh, wear my father's cognac as perfume. In Nova Kachovka near Kherson, they used to make excellent cognac. It won exhibitions in Paris. I cannot comment on its taste, however, but box uh, was pretty elegant. The scent was expensive. I attached the brandy cock behind my ears and on my wrists. My grandmother does the same in gray haired curls with a small leather purse on her arm bent in the elbow. No other woman in our family allows herself frivolous curls, a purse, or the red Moscow perfume that stands on a dressing table in an eternally dark vestibule. She's the only one who has a dressing table too. Only my grandmother, who gave birth to my mother in the basement of the house to the sound of the bombing in 1941, has a person. My grandfather had died a couple of months before my mother was born. All the remained of him was an official photograph in his flight uniform. There is a uniform of an aviation lieutenant. There is a hair-to-hair -hair hairdo, but there is no person. Last year, Finland responded to my brother's request and sent a photo of my grandfather taken a few days before his death. He died of a cold in captivity. In the photo, there is a boy wearing a turtle neck sweater, sitting on a bed with his legs tucked under him with thick striped woolen socks on. He is smiling slightly. I know he is smiling at me. My grandfather, who still has no imprints of those years, is smiling at me. A relaxed guy with a bus card who could very well be a visitor of the Kiev Mimosa or the New York De Dead Rabbit is smiling at me. My boyish grand, who is much younger than I am now, is smiling at me. He knew for sure that this photo would fall into my hands 60 years later. Hold on, little one, I am here. Trimai Samala, I am here. And I am holding on with my nails against the wall. Next to the tulips, there is a portrait of Sanya. In my suitcase, in addition to the bagels, which we ate for 12 and a half days, anticipating the war to start, I put the documents, Sanya's childhood photos, icons, and favorite fram framed paintings to hang around and immediately make the new room look like home. Besides them, I took perfumes, two evening guns, and Sanya's boxing uniform. In the suitcase, I have two pairs of warm socks for Sanya, the socks his aunt needed for him for the new year, for a happy new year 2022. I really was looking forward to this new year. We were all waiting for it. We expected it to be different. It is different indeed, absolutely. I am sitting in my evening gown in a cold room under the roof. I tuck my legs under me legs in thick striped woolen socks. 
my son socks. He miraculously resembles his great grandfather and the size of his foot, feet too, 46. These socks reach almost to my knees. They are warm, have remarkable striped colors, mustard, emerald, and chocolate. They don't have pink. I like chocolate. I eat it when I am sad, when I submit a project, and when I want love, unconditional love. I don't have to eat over conditional love. But my grandmother never used to have chocolate in her purse. They are take off or cancer sticks. Grandma gives them at one at a time from the bunny, always at the same moment as she clicks the key on the door of her apartment on the top floor of the five-story building before we cross the threshold of her house. There is a ritual grandeur in this. I swallow the candy like a wafer in a church and walk through the porch of a dark vestibule. Penitent sinners or the unbaptized are only allowed into... Grandmother is not a believer in this sense of the world of the word. She believes and hopes only for herself, but speaking of her, I always slip into religious vocabulary. I walk through a dark vestibule sure to hit the protruding refrigerator. Grandma has three refrigerators, two refrigerators and one refrigerator chamber. Its pregnant belly protrudes from the hallway. I go out of the dark vestibule into the same dark room. Grandma's windows are always closed. In summer, they are carved with leaves or wild grapes. In winter, carved with sheets. Getting older, so did my mother. They never made it out of the basement where my grandmother gave birth to my mom. I'm looking at white tulips. They are not her son. They are sent her ones. Trimai Thank you, Irina. Yes, <laughs> uh, and you can you can also read um, comments with uh, with some some lines. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay, Gaida, are you ready? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm just going to say quickly that um, I wrote this piece in April and back then we had to leave Kiev because it wasn't safe, but we really wanted to come home. So here it goes, the bribe. I already imagined myself sitting in a car in a passenger seat because my driver license has expired and I hadn't time to restore it before the war kicked in. Well, it's not that I had no time. My driving license expired in December, when a two-year period of the temporary license was over. And I forgot about this on purpose, as it turned out that to restore my license, I have to provide a medical certificate. And this certificate is not that easy to get. You either have to provide, you, are, you either have to buy it, which is an actual bribe, or visit every single doctor on the list, including a gynecologist. And that's when I was stunned at the crossroads with a very hard decision. A bribe is clearly not an option. I am a law abiding citizen, for God's sake. Undergoing medical examinations is even worse. I'm too much of a post Soviet kid, and I still have these horrible memories of concrete floors and walls painted ugly blue, cold corridors, and outrageous lady stuff. Although, if I were to work in a horrible place like a post Soviet public hospital, I could go even farther, become not just grumpy, but a real deal serial killer like Dexter. Anyway, I texted Vovka. Vovka is a real badass when it comes to taking care of such delicate matters like mine. Vovka sent me a phone number of someone called Tanya and said, give her a call, say I'm so-and-so, I need a certificate for a driver license and have about 500 hryvnias on you. And here I am sitting in my own apartment on a big soft couch with a fantastic view of the right bank of Kiev watching another sunset. And I just can't make myself call this Tanya. I'm all set up and beautiful, just did my hair in a salon I always considered too expensive, twisting another candy wrapper of Ferrero Rocher in my fingers. I'm wearing a special home suit, which is actually called the home suit. It means I can wear it outside, but I would look like a sick girl who went out for a piece of bread. 
And all this for my hard earned money and earned an honest living, no parents help or legal stuff. And I being so damn good and obedient have to bribe someone for a certificate. And how am I supposed to pass this 500 hymnus to her in an envelope or something? I asked Lovka. Hell no, they're gonna charge you for a doctor's appointment. I hadn't called Tanya after all. I keep living with an expired license. My husband drives me around and that's just fine. I don't like to drive. When driving, you have to be careful and keep your eyes on the road. There was this time when I was driving down the highway, thinking about something, fantasizing about something in my head. And at some point I realized that I don't see the road or other cars at all. Just keep driving thoughtlessly, blindly. I got so scared. And then it turned out that during martial law, I can drive using my expired license or update it without any medical certificates. Well, ain't I smart for refusing to give a bribe for that certificate back then? So here I am imagining myself in the car in the passenger seat coming back to Kiev. Hannah Mahler says that it's still not safe and Vitaly says the same. And then I see the news. Slovakia brings its embassy back to Kiev. Well, if Slovakia is coming back, I'm definitely coming back. I imagine myself cleaning the apartment for three days straight and I hate cleaning, but then I don't like strangers touching my stuff. So it's a deadlock. I used to clean in subscription once and that's it. I clean everything myself although they did it better. It's just that I opened my wardrobe with all the junk and spent hours looking at every single item. Oh, here is that photo from a Christmas booth in Vienna. And here is a badge from a conference in Malta. And here is a picture painted by my godson. And there is a silver ring that I bought for myself because my boyfriend at the time didn't want to. And so I'm sitting there with all this stuff, moving it, putting it back, wiping the dust. And that's when the day comes to an end and I have to shut it all down. So I'm going to need at least three days to clean the apartment. And then I'm going to turn on Netflix on my 75 inch screen and order McDonald's and put a PlayStation controller somewhere in the background. And I'm going to make a nice picture of all of that and will send it to my childhood friend from Voronezh. Just want her to have a look at a normal life. I'm all calm now. I'm not burning with rage. Just that this rage is never part of me. A gentle touch will set me on fire at once. No, I'm not angry. I'm fine, just like everybody else. It's just that I hate injustice to the point of madness. And I learned to feel joy. I feel joy every time when I see them suffering and crying about losing the last pieces of civilization. But I'm not angry. I'm fine, kind even, just like everybody else. That's all. I'm not angry. I'm fine. <laughs> Anybody else? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, next for uh, for authors, and I, I you know, I uh, authors. I, I I just saw it that uh, next for pieces is from from the book from the book that I hope we will publish uh, this year and and next year. So, uh, girls, um, I have to ask you say a couple of words about about your book. Okay, Mariana, <laughs> let's start. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Mariana, and uh, I'm really happy to be here and uh, read uh, something for you. Uh, it's, uh, um, I think it's important for all of us to say something about us. Um, now I'm living in Portugal. Uh, but when the uh, war started, I was in Ukraine uh, and uh, I took my cat, I took my notebook and now, and now I'm here. Uh, and my dream of living by the ocean came true It's in this difficult way, but it's life. So um, I read, uh, I will read a short text from my book. As Natalie says, uh, it's a book about... Uh, a writing community in my hometown and about my family. Uh, this text uh, will be about me and my mother. Uh, so, uh, adult flowers. I entered the bedroom the same moment she drank the perfume. In one hand, my mother holds a spray dispenser and the other an empty glass perfume bottle. She squints, grimaces, frowns, but slows. Then she sees me. Maya, baby, it's not what you think. I'm 12. Can I think of anything when I see my mom drink perfume? I see her drink her drinking vodka and huge hiding bottle under the pillow. She doesn't drink wine. It immediately makes her sick. 
Will she be sick after the perfume from a fancy perfume bottle? It's a kind of flower, too sweet and adult. But, that, but that's the scent. I don't know how it tastes. My mother knows. She lay down on the sofa, covering her hair, uh, covering her head with a sheet. I sit on the edge next to her. I can hear her vomiting as she covers her head under the sheet. She vomits all over the pillow with dark blue floor ornaments. I want to die, say my mother, without uncovering herself. I want to die. I bring a bowl of water. I splash uh, it on my mother's face with my hand. I lower my hand into the water and splash again. She uncovers her face, dissatisfied. Enough, Maya. This is no need. I see that she vomit up the, uh, the only things in her stomach, the perfume from, an, from a fancy bottle. She hasn't eaten since yesterday, just drunk adult heavy flowers. Go away, my mother suddenly waves. Away, I said. Did you come after me? Who are you speaking to, mom? In the bedroom, there are just the two of us. Don't you see? She is trembling under a wet white sheet with dark blue or floral ornament. She waves her arms and laughs. Saliva and... Sorry. <laughs> Saliva and vomit on her chipped lips. Saliva and vomit on her wet hair. I'm 12. I already know that my mother is sick of perfume as well. Take me away. Take me away, she shot, laughing, and begin to strangle herself. She presses her neck with her hands slippery from sweat and vomit, cover her nose and mouth and press, uh, cover her nose and mouth and presses her neck again. She glows. She catches her breath. She press again. She coughs. She laughed. Mom, do you want it? I ask. The door to the bedroom is closed. The window are closed. They're leading me. Love, uh, they're leading me. Love my mother. They're here. Here. Midday at the middle of summer. The sun shines out the uh, white curtains. Who, mom? Who is here? Adult heavy flowers on her chin, on her neck, under her nails, on the pillow with, dull, with dark blue floor ornaments. Are you blind? Mother is surprised. surprised. Over here, look, two devils with tails, with horns, devils indeed. And she laughed again. Do you really want it? I ask. Mom, do you want that? I step on the back spray dispenser. I feel it between the tooth of my right foot. It is crushed. Why did I notice it just now? Why am, uh, why am I writing about this just now? In 10 minutes, I will be standing um, uh, with a skein of twine for straw. I will splat it in my mother's face and choking on tears show, do you want? Then go hand yourself. The forest is across the road. In a week, she will agree to uh, undergo rehabilitation, but will be cured only after three long years. She will say that without my father and my support, she wouldn't have been um, able to recover. She wouldn't not have held on. And she has been holding on for 13 years now. And I know why I'm writing about it just now. I'm 28. Today I bought new perfume. Uh, will choosing, I suddenly smell, smelled that one. The aroma was adult, heavy, and floral. It is not for me. It is not for my mom. It is an unfinished perfume bottle with a crushed black dispenser. Thank you. Mm. Thank you, Mariana. Sorry Thank about you. my cat. Now we uh, believe that you really took your cat with you. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, the I, I really waiting for this book uh, because this book is very profound. At the same time, it's very funny. I mean, it's all the time like uh, in one chapter you are crying in another chapter you are laughing and so i hope we'll publish it also in in english and you will be able to read it thank you mariana uh now i have uh, to turn off um, my sound because the next order is sits, sits next to me <laughs> because her internet also stopped to work <laughs> okay marina
Hello, my name is Marina. Um, I write book and now I read one part of my book. <clears throat> Ten reasons. Ten reasons why I divorced Igor. Reasons number one. Man says and man doesn't do. Oh, I wanted to buy you flowers, but I didn't. I wanted to tell you that you were beautiful, but I didn't. I wanted to organize a surprise vacation for you so you could spend a weekend in a swimming pool, but I didn't. Reason number two double standards. I have quite an official title for the second reason, but that's what it is without exaggeration. Beard is only for woodcutters. Ahaha. Two months later he has a beard. Oh, if thank, thanks for inviting us. You are a such good cook and you have quite a taste in wine. Lena, why the hell did we go to see if she thinks uh, of herself as a wine expert and she cooks pasta. This is macaroni, not pasta. I would see how she would live in a Stalin era. Oh, Jenya and Anya, how nice to see you. I'm so sick of seeing them. They are so boring and weird. Let's go on vacation with them. We could save at last uh, 200 bucks. Lena, you should try to save money when it comes to your health. Why is uh, your dentist so expensive? Is this a girl from the Mia clinic on Kutuzova Street? Because 25 bucks for a dental seal is a little too much. Lena, you are not that old. You are only 30, but you are already falling apart. Reason number three. B is boring. No, maybe it's more correct to say grouchy. Uh, what would you call someone who is grossing all the time? A grouchy? Hello, my name is Igor and I'm a grouchy. Sounds important. Understand is as you wish, but a grouch is a grouch and there is nothing more to add. Reason number four, mistakes. Like the uh, majority of people, I'm afraid to make mistakes. At least that's what my therapist says. Maybe he's right. I'm really afraid of it. But as Eva always says, if you don't make any mistakes, how can you learn? That's why with a little greeting and with very slowly movements, I'm trying to accept that I made a mistake and no one died because of it. First, thanks God, I'm not a doctor. Secondly, the next time I'll be a much more attentive little boob who after the first bad attempt knows how to do it better. This is me, Igor is quite different. When he makes a mistake, he starts immediately provide that he is right. When he makes a mistake, he ignores all arguments and says, I have nothing else to add. When he makes a mistake, he waits for everyone around him to forget about it, but we won't. Reason number five. The reason number five is the living of love. Who recognized this song by Igor Nikolaev? Huh? It's quite scary that I know that this is a song by Igor Nikolaev. No, it's not scary, it's a shame. I was sure that this song from, was sung by the group Viagra and just by thinking about that, I remembered that uh, one of the group's singers was the blonde Vera Brezhneva and another one brunette with the d cup beast in a blue dress. But no, this was a song by, uh, by Igor Nikolaev. He has uh, curly uh, hair and a mustache. But to tell you the truth, this is not that important because my fifth reason is sex. To be more priced, not just sex, but it's absence. Because one to two times per month is the absence of sex. Because one to two orgasm every six months is the absence of sex. Because let's watch a movie. I am tired. I need to wake up early. Let's do it another time. If you hear that every day and <laughs> it's eager who says it, it is the absence of sex.
Reason number six is simple and short mother, his mother, Lyudmila Petrivna. Reason number seven, a man. I need a man. I need a man. Yes, I understand that with him, sometimes I took the role of child or a mother or a sister or a neighbor, but now I am writing my reasons. And my reason number seven is that I need a man. I needed him then, I need him now. A man with hands, legs, a brain, a heart, and a dick. Nothing unrealistic, just a normal man. I thought that I would gather 10 reasons, but I see that for me to divorce, I need only seven of them. I need seven reasons <laughs> to divorce. And I need uh, courage. This perhaps is here, because uh, this phrase is here because of the Holy Trinity from my a previous chapter is my therapist, Eve and me. Courage, because still when I see this kind of picture, you know, a young woman and next to her, a young man, he hug, uh, hugs her, they're smiling, the sun is shining, there are a lot of green leaves on trees and everything is so spring delicious. She wear a white dress and around her neck, she has a colorful silk scarf. He wear white trousers with, arrow, with arrows, uh, white sneakers and a white shirt. <laughs> there is a light wind, two small clouds are floating across the sky towards one another and meet just under the sun to become one cloud of love. Still, <laughs> still when I see such a picture, I start crying. Courage, because I'm still living how, uh, I still learning how to save money so I can have extra 600 grivnas to pay my dentist. Courage, because still the only self pleasure that I love myself is a session with my therapist. Once a week, a session with a therapist. Courage, because here in Lisbon, I'm spending my last money and tomorrow I'll be back to my eternal circle, living from paycheck to paycheck for a certain period for who knows for how long, maybe a year, maybe two, seven, or maybe I'll die like this, a lonely woman who waited for her page, paycheck and in order to pay for session with her therapist and to pay two dental cells, three, uh, 600 grivnas each at the clinic of Mia on Kutuzov Street. I don't really like this picture. I'm afraid to stay alone forever. I need someone to care about me. I need love. Eternal, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Marina. Uh, you know, first when you divorce, first you're in depression, and then you started to write a book, <laughs> <laughs> and and you wrote a good book. Uh, and um, I see that Alexandra, you um, text about some uh, method writing tools, and I want to say that this book. We understood that it will be book and it will be a very good book on the uh, sixth, si yeah, sixth, yeah, it was uh, sixth level. Mm -hmm. You know, when you work with your favorite book, oh, Marina, okay. Marina was in advanced class and sixth level, uh, it's when you uh, try to make a copy of your favorite author, like try to steal um, the style, the voice. Mm -hmm of your favorite uh, author and marina took elizabeth gilbert and after that we said okay just 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 keep doing like that please <laughs> and you will have a book and now and now we have this book <laughs> thank you um next or uh, next author is also uh she wrote a book i hope sonia you will you will tell a little bit more um, is it okay you sound Yes. Yeah, just uh, try to try to speak more or louder. Mm -hmm. um, so I live. Uh, I'm Sonia. Mm, I uh, live in Odessa, but now I'm in Kiev because it's not safe to be in Odessa. Uh, I live uh, in Odessa in general, so it's my specialization: uh, Odessa literature and 
this uh, cultural concepts uh, or this uh, cultural myths and um, I uh, read about it, I write about it, uh, and um, I live <laughs> with it. Um, two years ago, I started uh, studying of method writing in Kiev. And um, a couple of weeks ago, I finished uh, my first book. It's a novel. It's a historical uh, novel uh, about videos, of course. Um, it's a story of a big, deep love uh, in marriage uh, and um, uh, dramatic historical times uh, that was 100 years uh, ago. Uh, so um, this book named uh, The White Rabbits, uh, it's a metaphor. And um, uh, today uh, mm, I will read um, a little part of them. Uh, first of all, uh, I want to tell that uh, some words about plot. Um, it's a story of a young woman that lived uh, near Athens in Greece. Uh, she emigrated uh, from Odessa in uh, 1920. And uh, now it's 1922. Uh, she's pregnant. She has a husband. She have a house, she have enterprise, uh, but uh, she have a sad story in her past. And uh, she tell her story in letters uh, to her friend, to her friend Nicola. Uh, so um, one more detail, uh, she have my name. She have the same name as me. Her name is Sonia also. Um, I will read, um, a part of chapter that called the war. Uh, I think I can start, yes. The war. Dear Nicola, how did the war start? I mean, I know everything about Sarajevo, Serbia, and about us to Hungary, but do all those captures of Trebzon, Trangixinks of Portugal, those allies and enemies, all those break thoughts and traps put wise of anything at all. And hardly would they tell how it come down on us with all the great courts and furinals, while we could not imagine our white sugar ration. My war started at our summer house on a heavenly quiet evening in July, when my mama and I were waiting for Boris, and he came in all agitated and preoccupied at the accent when the glance comes averted and the bros were strange enough to meet each other. I was watching his face in the mirror while he was standing with his back to me, washing his hands on the sink. He declared war on Germany, he said, wiping his fingers with the towel. They've read the manifesto today on the Nikolaevsky Boulevard. The crowd was something instant when the icons and flags and the people were so inspired. What shall we do, Boria? I said. Stay where you are and eat well, he said and kissed my shoulder. Impossible, said my mama. I'm coming with you tomorrow. My clerk is German and my purchaser German. Terrible time, that's all I could say. Do you think it will be a real war, mama? I asked. With Germans? Certainly, Sonichka, said my mama. There was mobilization in Odessa with a long queue stretching to the recruiting stations. I remember those men were eager to go to the war. They were standing and sitting on the pavement, covered in dust, passing of water to one another. Those were reservists and volunteers, students in their wizard caps, employers and hefty, well-built working men as they generally are in Ukraine. I could see the train station. It was humming all covered in sand and heat, and the wagons were loaded, and women on the platforms were crying in the same manner, showing bundles of food and blessing the backs of the men that were singing songs. The autumn of the 1914s brought us so many rumors that we almost didn't think like it's far in Odessa that it's nothing like on front, along with the high prices, streets full of women and very few men, and the death of my mama's enterprise. The Bosphorus and Dardanelles were closed for us. 
goods were rotting in the warehouses, and our hustlers were sitting numb and silent over Grechiska Street, not hidden the women. They were getting poorer and poorer with every minute, rubbing their shaving chins and exchanging dark glances. We knew that two of them shot themselves that year, so much for it not feeling like war. One morning of my birthday, Boris said, that's for you, and presented me with some sharp smelling chrysanthemums and a pearl bracelet, taking the case from behind his back as was his custom. I put on the bracelet, thinking, thanks God, he's not in the army or the navy, but he was a doctor, Nikola, and for the war, it's all the same. In a week, there was a sudden rumble in the night, and the windows answered with the thin glass tinkling. No light, said Boris, getting up. Seems like they're shielding us from the open sea. Then he came to the window, turned to face me, and said so distinctly that I instantly gave up every hope of me hurting. I volunteered. They need doctors. When a woman hears something like that, Nicola, she's holding with her mouth shut. When she breathes in, and that sounds like a giggle. And if she would even think of waiting an explanation, she would surely hear, that's the war, I have my obligations. And she would go like, and what about your obligations to me? And he would go like, don't you understand me a bit? And she'd say, and you me? And that can drag on and on to eternity, until the shouting starts, until the tears and God forbid and the slab. And the most desperate ones would go and ask to take them as nurses, to wash the urinals or wherever, just for the sake of being taken, but they won't be. I gave myself a very small liberty. When did you decide? No quarreling with the one who could never return. Long time ago, didn't want to tell you, was waiting until your birthday. Had no idea how to tell you or what. They will take me as a doctor of the hospital train. They said a woman's doctor wouldn't be of use on the front because I'm hardly doing any surgeries. I stepped near to him in my night gown and we were talking quietly and incoherently, interrupting each other and with the sudden silences. And sometimes my replies was only a sign in the name, a sign in the name until Katya called from behind doors. Have you heard? The Turks shelled Odessa during the night. He could have left in three days, but the appointment delayed him. He was consulting for 10 hours in a row just to leave earlier. And I was visiting church to pray for Armistic to come earlier than he could complete all his appointments. When we were dining on our last evening, he suddenly reached for my wrist and smiled. Where in it, he asked. Where in, I said. When? I asked tomorrow, he answered. Mm. Thank uh, you. I wrote in the chat that for me, this book is masterpiece and uh, we try to do everything possible and impossible to publish it in English because I want the uh, world to read it. That's why we have to publish it in English because it's it's about, it's about Odessa, it's about 19th century, it's about history, but also it's about it's about deep, deep love. And I, I love this book. I know that I love uh, all my students' books. <laughs> but this one is really very, very profound. It's, I already read it twice. <laughs> so I hope you will read it also in English. And if, if you can help us with, I don't know, with some context with... Um, Published houses or agents, please let us know because I don't know. I just try to. I just try to do that. Thank you so much. And thank th you. Th thank you. Um, okay. And now it's also uh, next. Next order is also she wrote a book, and that book for me, as I told Val Valeria, Valeria will uh, read next. That book for me, you have to read this book when you're upset or when you feel that uh, your life goes maybe in wrong direction you have to read it because after this book you will feel much 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 better 
<laughs> it's like it's like therapy it's 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 so good and i think that these these texts um is like our dessert <laughs> for tonight and i hope that after these texts you have um you have mood to sit and to write something to write something okay valeria please hi everyone thank you for this beautiful presentation introduction <laughs> so i'm the last one to read but it's the first time for me when i'm reading in front of people that i don't know so i'm, I'm a little bit nervous uh, so the majority of my time i spent uh, working in logistics and then as we say in french during my lost hours i write um, i've been with uh, method writing and natalie for the last uh, two uh, years and uh, uh, slowly but surely, uh, I'm finishing my book. So this is the story of a girl who lives in France. I I'm from Ukraine, but I've been living in France for the seven, seven years. And uh, so I'm writing about my everyday life, about France, about French people, about uh, my love life and uh, uh, th this kind of things. And th so this text I wrote when um, I couldn't write, and so I used the uh, well-known uh, um, trick. If you don't know, if you can't write, you have this, um, how do you call this? Like, yeah, you, you, you can't write, just write about the fact that you can't write. So the title of the text is the bullshit text should be written. So I hope you like it. Uh, if I do something, it should be fucking awesome right away. With such a statement, I sit down to write and I'm writing fucking nothing. My thoughts are confused, sentences are too raw, and words come together in some kind of inharmonious pile. I have a desperate desire to throw away my laptop, to angrily slam the wall next to me, to fall to the floor in despair, and to dramatically start crying. I take a sip of white wine and, and throw the dice. It would be incorrect to say that I'm a perfectionist, but allowing myself to be imperfect according to my own standards is not an easy task. My tiny, frightened inner child is shaken with a fear at the thought that some Vasya and Ola won't like my work, or that I'll be disappointed in myself even before some Vasya and Ola have time to think about it. My tiny, frightened inner child doesn't have the right to fail. And then comes the, real, uh, the only real question. What the fuck? Who the fuck needs all this suffering? Who the hell is, uh, is it all for? According to the rules, a crisis is a chance to allow yourself to write fucking bullshit and then even more bullshit and more bullshit. And that is until you manage to make a good text out of uh, bullshit. And after good texts come even better ones. And with perfect text, one day you'll find yourself among classics. God forbid, of course. Darling, what would you like me to cook for you today? What a beautiful question and what an incredible positive effect it has. As if I didn't say a trillion times that even if I love cooking, sometimes it can be quite uh, pleasant to be uh, to see someone doing it for me. Our new half IKEA kitchen is flooded with the evening light by, by a lamp in, in a paper lampshade. He works for another company now, and I can see him every evening no later than 6 p.m. He doesn't wear his uniform anymore, so now he's a respectable man in a sweater with Hugo Boss uh, cologne. Uh, the frying pan which he holds in his hand fits him well. Madam would like salmon, gnocchi, and zucchini, I, uh, I say and theatrically wave my hand as if I really have a choice, and we don't have only these three products in our fridge, plus some eggs, butter, and Ukrainian spreads. When I went to Athens a long time ago, I bought myself a little statue of Plato. I bought him because it was my ancient period when I was doing only this, reading ancient sages, watching not, the not yet uh, well-known in Ukraine Mary Beards and learning ancient Greek. My Plato survived at least seven locations and a lot of trips. At a certain point, he even lost his hat, but some glue saved him. And now he is sitting on my bookshelf, all yellowed because of life and stresses. He looks at me with his wise eyes and he seems to say with a Greek accent, stop suffering, girl. Yet stop suffering isn't an option. A day without suffering is not a real day. At least a little bit of suffering should be done. 
I suffer in order to have someone to feel sorry for me. And if I, if someone feels sorry for me, it means that, that they understand. And if they understand, they love. And if I am loved, my tiny frightened inner child feels that she is okay. So it goes on in a circle. And here is a perfect moment to remember the damn 90s and young parents who were bringing me up the best they could without really knowing what this best looks like. My childhood started in times of post-colonial development, in times when I considered macaroni with sugar a delicacy, in times when my mom and dad studied and worked at the same time in order to buy me fancy unique jeans with Mickey Mouse on them that no one on our street or maybe even town had. In times when in order to be trendy, I needed to have a yo-yo, in times when my dad was bringing home VHS with Disney cartoons with bad Russian dubbing. I'm trying to persuade my tiny frightened inner child that fucking awesomeness doesn't come right away, that fucking bullshit texts are sometimes written, and that I should continue writing them, writing them as fucking bullshit as they are in order to get out of the pit of non-writing. My tiny frightened inner child grimaces in displeasure, inflates her lips, and crosses her arms in a showy manner, but finally agrees. Respectable man in a sweater with Hugo Boss cologne, to whom the frying pan fits well cooked dinner. I close my laptop with a certain feeling of discontent, and I continue repeating to myself that fucking bullshit texts are sometimes written, but they shouldn't be the reason to stop writing. Thank you, Valeria. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Your piece always inspire me. And by the way, uh, all four books that you, um, the, you you heard just a, just a little uh, pieces from these books, but they they all were uh, born f uh, born from uh, exercise. Sonia's book it was um, Last World. It's a second level. And uh, Valeria, it was uh, I, I don't remember. You just you just made uh, different exercises, and now we have a book. So I just want to say that sometimes when you think that you um, can't write or it's very difficult for you, just sit down maybe through um, a dice or maybe just take some of their exercise of method writing and probably you will have a first chapter and then you will have the whole book. <laughs> Thank you. Beautiful writing. And um, I just want to say if um, if anyone wants to make a donation to um, support uh, these writers as they um, in their quest to publish their work, because Natalie has started a publishing house, a small press, um, and uh, you can you can send any amount via PayPal to her email. Uh, you just pay. Oh, we don't have uh... Lori Kova at Gmail, right? Is that correct? Did I say it right? I put it in the chat. Uh, <laughs> I'm I'm sorry. Oh. What's your um what's your uh <laughs> your your PayPal that people can make a donation? <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm frozen. Can everyone hear me? I'm not sure if it's me or Natalie. Um, you can hear uh, me. I, I, I can hear you. Okay. So I, I, I can hear everyone. Oh, good. Okay. So I think it might be um, Natalie has said she wrote, now it's my turn to have bad internet. <laughs> yes. And it goes around. I get it too. The bus goes by and then my internet goes out too. So um, anyway, uh, thank you so much to our writers, um, uh, method writers from Ukraine and to Natalie. You guys are amazing. Um, uh, your work. It, it captures the everyday and it captures um, what you're going through right now, you know, the, the, the hard times you're going through, but it also has this element of reality that is, it's like a window into a wor another world um, and, and you've done it so well. 
um, the, the work was is tremendous. I hope that you keep writing. Um, I hope that people who are watching this will consider making a donation to support um, Natalie's uh, publishing efforts and um, the San Francisco Creative Writing Institute will do whatever we can to continue to support you. Um, I, if, uh, I'd like to um, reserve a few minutes for a Q&A if Natalie's, um, uh, or for any of the writers, um, but if Natalie's internet comes back, um, and um, I just want to say um, that this will not be the only time that we will dialogue and interact. Um, we are planning another meeting um, for some time in the fall where the San Francisco uh, writers of method writing and the Ukrainian writers of method writing can have a dialogue and an exchange. And um, one, and I'd like to just give the topic ahead of time. Um, and it's uh, based on one of my other teachers. Um, her name uh, is Yi Yun Lee. Uh, she was my teacher in my master's program, and she wrote an, a memoir uh, called um, uh, Dear Writer, I Write to You in My Life, um, for, in Your Life from My Life. It's a, it's, a, it's a tragic memoir, but I love the the line, I write to you in, in your life from my life. And um, think about that, just it, that's, that's the topic, write to each other. So think about what you want to say and anything, it can be anything. Like, for example, um, if you have a gerbil and you're like, oh, I have a pet gerbil and they live in another room. I actually have a friend who's in the same situation. Or if you take thyroid pills and you're like, oh, I would be looking for my thyroid pills in such a situation. Or if, if your mother was an alcoholic and um, you survived that or your, and your mother was a cancer survivor or you have a grandmother um, that took care of you or something or something random that you want to share. Um, with the writers, um, I write to you in your life from my life. And, um, Ukrainian writers who are watching this, Ukrainian method writers, what do you want to say to the San Francisco Bay Area um, writers? Yeah, thank you so much. I, I thank you so much for your support and for all these words because it's it's so important for us right now. You you just can't imagine. Thank you so much that you are with us. Does anyone have any questions or comments that they want to make? I see, I see one in the audience, um, in, in the in the in the chat. Um, I'm from Iran and went through war, uh, the war years, and that is why I could connect with all these poets. Thank you, Manaz, for saying that. Yeah. And I hope uh, we will see each other in uh, in autumn in our next reading. Yes, and um, we're working on. Um, getting a co-sponsor with the San Francisco Public Library um, for the next reading. So um, stay tuned for that. Yeah. Thank you so much. And take care of yourself. Uh, oh, I just want to continue to read comments. <laughs> Does anyone, do you, anyone have any questions for Natalie? Natalie? No. No questions. <laughs> oh, we have one question. Rowena, what's your question? Rowena is one of my oh, students. Um, Natalie, I really admired the way you and Alexandra put this together and the writers you chose to be um, here for the reading. It really gives a human face to the things that are happening in your country. And I think sometimes uh, living in this country, we don't always see that. We don't always hear it. So thank you all so much. This was a wonderful reading. Um, you guys are all super writers. The very strong imagery, feelings, emotions, really appreciated. Um, you guys doing the work to, sh to share your stories with us, stories and poems. Thank you. Oh, thank, thank you, you so much. Uh, as uh, Alicia said in the beginning of this reading, that we are like a little army. So we're mm -hmm. like a little <laughs> literature army. <laughs> we try to do the best. <laughs> and thank you for your support. Thank and you so actually, much. Rowena helped um, us on our side get the word out. So she was doing a lot of volunteer um, mm -hmm. contacting of the press. She contacted um, a lot of the Ukrainian American organizations, which we didn't know, but they're um, headquartered in the, in, uh, in the United States is New York and San Francisco. So she reached out. Um, oh. and, so thank you, Rowena, for that. Thank you oh. so much. Um, my family's Korean and um, they've been through a war too. So we know what that feels like. 
it. Um, yeah. And you guys all have my sympathy. No. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're welcome. My family also has been through war. My, my father was a um, survivor of the Greek Civil War and World War II. So it, it definitely um, changes the way you look at the world and, and, it, and it, it changes your storytelling too. Yeah. <laughs> but we are brave mm -hmm. and uh, we fight. Very and brave. yes, and I know that everything will be even better than it was. We hope. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so, Alexandra, do you have internet? I have internet. I'm freeze, um, I'm freeze again. Okay. Um, well, I think if there's no more questions or comments, um, is it okay if we end with the video that uh, your your um, uh, that uh, your student made from her uh, poem? Yeah. Okay. Uh, let me see if I can get it. Here it is. I'm gonna, um, I haven't seen the video um, and it's, I'm sure it's emotional. So um, we're gonna, I'm gonna play it. And, then and you can open the, I will send uh, the chat again, the text and you can like read if you want. I hope but I think yeah, you already heard that, so I think you will just feel how how you can hear how it sounds in in Ukrainian. Okay. Are you hearing the sound? No. Mm -hmm. It might be something. It might be a setting. Um, sorry. Oh, I see. I see a very good question from uh, Gabriel. <laughs> Gabriel wrote, how can we keep track in uh, contact with the writing group? I think we can um, we can send you a, a link for our group on Facebook and we can be together there because it's like our closed um, group just for just for method writing students. And sometimes we publish our our pieces there or discuss something. So we, 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 we can share it with you. Thank you so much. And I, I, I will be glad to read your pieces and uh, and to know more about, about your work. And now we uh, now we have um, Alexandra's contact and every time when we make um, we'll make a reading, we can join you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm sorry that the sound is not working, but um, uh, we'll just have to watch it on our own. I'll, I'll, let's put it in the chat, and then I encourage you, um, as you're logging off, to please watch this this video and, and remember these writers um, and think of them because they're doing the hard work um, of uh, of of coming to the, showing up to the page and um, learning all of the things that um, that Jack Grape's uh, method writing has taught them and their teacher is amazing um, and um, and I, I, I just I hope you guys have a really great um, evening um, and and morning and afternoon and um, thank you all for coming and uh, mm -hmm. we'll see you next time Alexandra you give us hope and you give us support and you give us light and thank you so much for that mm -hmm. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.
Bye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.